So in this video, I'd like to share with you what I think is one of the best resources for learning analog synthesis. It's not a video or a set of video tutorials. It is in fact a collection of books. They were produced by Roland back in the 1980s. And these are the books that I use to teach myself analog synthesis. And I'm making this video because while I was rummaging through my music archives, I discovered my original collection of these books. Now the main book is called A Foundation for Electronic Music and it sounds a little bit like a textbook and it's got a lot of information in it but it is not difficult to read and there are lots of diagrams and pictures to show you exactly what the text is talking about. I'll show you some examples in a second. Now these books are currently available free as a PDF download and I will of course leave a link in the description but before you dash off to download the books there are a few things I'd really like to say about them and about learning analog synthesis in general but before we dive into that you can tell I'm excited can't you I want to show you a video of uh, my original books now I made this with my iPad which I also used to record my voiceover and it sounds as if it was recorded through a low pass filter. So I'll apologize for the sound quality. A lot, I think it's still legible. So let's have a quick look at the original books. So these are my original copies of Roland's A Foundation for Electronic Music. Um, now I have two versions. This is, uh, this is the original one. And I can only imagine that I bought this and then they came out with this collection called the Synthesizer. Um, so I'm imagining uh, that I bought this first and then I bought this. This actually includes a copy of this. So I have two of these. Um, I'll just have a quick flick through. Um, it, it is an absolute mine of information about sound and sound waves and harmonics, how sound works. Um, it's just absolutely brilliant. But I'll show you a close-up of this in PDF format uh, in a second. That uh, one really, really interesting and for me useful piece of information this fold out section at the back which lists the pitch range of all these orchestral instruments against the keyboard uh, so if you're doing any sort of orchestral instrumentation uh, this is incredibly useful at least I found it incredibly useful just so you don't picture a trumpet too low or a violin too low or a cello too high So the synthesizer contains the foundation for electronic music, which is the same book as the one I've just been showing you. It also has this fold out in the back. Yes, we've seen that. What's next? Then there are uh, two books of practical examples of synthesis. Uh, now I'm just I'm not going to show you any more of these because they are in PDF format and it's far easier to see and they are far more clear. Going back a little bit earlier even, I don't know if you can see this but probably not, but at the bottom here it has uh, Roland Corporation November 1979 so that is going back a while and this is the Roland System 100 and this is a picture of the 101 module which was the core module in the system again you can download this in pdf format i do like having books um and this shows uh a, it has a lot of information about the uh synthesizer a lot of musical examples and it also gives you a rundown of uh sound and synthesis so if you have if you are lucky enough i guess to have a system 100 or a, an sh101 which is quite similar in many ways then um this might be of interest to you and as well as that book roland also also produced a couple of patch books patch book one patch book two and again there are pdf versions of these which i will link to in the description so if you're just getting started in synthesis um, these and particularly these I think you may find very very useful 
Now, as you saw in the video, the main book is called A Foundation for Electronic Music. There are two books of practical examples which show you how to patch sounds together. And there's a fourth book on multi-tracking electronic music, which you will not be surprised to learn, majors around a multi-track tape recorder. However, please do not let that put you off because the other books provide a foundation course in analog synthesis. Now, I know how it is with PDFs. You download some PDFs, but they often languish unlooked at somewhere on your hard drive. My hard drive is littered with PDFs I haven't looked at. So if you are going to download these, I would ask you please to have a look at them. They will do you absolutely no good if they just sit on your hard drive, taking up hard drive space. Now, I also know how it is with videos. Videos seem to be the most popular method of learning new things at the moment. And with easy access to the internet and streaming servers, it's no surprise. And videos are brilliant for teaching you about synthesis because you can see the instructor turning the dials and moving the sliders and you can hear what is happening in response to that. And of course, that doesn't happen with a book. So as well as watching videos, and there are many excellent videos about analog synthesis on YouTube, I think you can also get a lot out of a book. In fact, I would say you can get a lot more out of a book for several reasons. First of all, books are easy to find your way around. They have a contents page, they have an index. So if you want to find out how often ADSR is mentioned, for example, you can flip to the exact page. It's not so easy to do that with videos, even if it does have timings in the description. I also think you can cram an awful lot more information into a book than you can into a video. You can easily read and skim through sections in a book and absorb the information there, whereas it takes a lot longer to speak words than it does to read them. So you can get more information in a book and you can get through it faster. And also these books have some excellent illustrations. And for someone to prepare illustrations like this and put them in a video would take a long time. So yes, I'm a big fan of book learning, particularly these books, but it doesn't have to be an either or. You can watch videos, of course, as well, but I'm just saying that these books have a lot of information, which if you are wanting to learn analog synthesis, you will find very useful. Now, having said all that, these books are, of course, in PDF format. They are not printed on paper, but you could, of course, print them out. But however you choose to use them, of course, it's up to you. I just hope that you will find them useful. Now, I found these books particularly useful at the time because I had a Roland 100M system. And the collection, the synthesizer, uses the Roland 100M system modules as examples. However, as we will see, there are block diagrams of the signal path. So you could use these books with virtually any analog synthesizer. So here's the first book, and if you're going to read only one, this would be the one to read, A Foundation for Electronic Music. Now, I've blown it up the full screen size, so you can easily see the contents. So here is the contents list. Uh, you can read it, see what it contains. I'm not going to read every one of these out. You can pause the video if you want to read them in more detail. There we are. And let's just get to some of the interesting bits. It starts off by telling you what sound is. You can see there's diagrams on the right. Scroll, scroll, scroll. Let's try the page buttons. And here are some of the excellent explanatory diagrams. Now, one of the things which I found very useful in particular let me see if I can find it. So it shows you the harmonic content of various waveforms. And there we are. There's the harmonics. So it has a lot of these relational materials. So it enables you to visualize sound waves and uh, square waves, sine waves and so on, the harmonic content and explains amplitude and frequency, all this sort of stuff, the very basics of analog synthesis. So this is the foundation book. Let us skip over to Practical Synthesis for Electronic Music. This is volume one. Uh, now this uses, as I said, the Roland 100M system. Let me just get the page buttons. 
and here's the contact so it uses the Roland 100m system but as i said don't let that put you off and i'll show you why in a second uh, so here's the contents uh, here's a list of illustrations there are a lot of diagrams very helpful diagrams in this book more right so one of the really useful things is it, it uses uh, these block diagrams to show you the signal path so we have a keyboard which generates pitch information which goes to the vco the voltage control oscillator which goes into the vcf voltage control filter which goes into the vca the voltage control amplifier the keyboard also sends a gate out to an ADSR. This is an envelope generator, attack, decay, sustain, and release. And that feeds into the uh, VCA to give the sound a, a, a sound contour, a shape, a volume shape. So it has these very useful signal flow diagrams. And underneath here, we have some Roland 100M system modules, and it shows you the patch system which you would use to create this sort of sound. So although you may not have a Roland 100M system, but you can follow these block diagrams and connect your synthesizer in a similar way and you will get similar results. Now, if you're interested in modular synthesis but haven't yet taken the plunge, uh, I think these books would be an absolute gold mine. And if you are interested in modular synthesis, then you probably know that Behringer has created a set of Roland 100M clones, which it calls the System 100. And if that took your fancy, then you could use Behringer's System 100 modules and follow these patch examples exactly. So let's just have a flip through the book to see what else there is. So as you can see, there are lots of wonderful examples, patch examples in this book. So we'll have a quick look at the second book. This is the second practical example book. And here are the contents. So this one tends to concentrate on acoustic instruments such as strings and brass, there's trumpets. And um, if we get towards the end here, uh, drums. list of illustrations um, so you can create a, a vast range of sounds with a analog synthesizer as you probably know so um, we'll just have a quick flick through some of these examples lots of diagrams lots of block diagrams um, and some of these they tend to introduce a second oscillator filters low frequency oscillators and there's another patch diagram for the Roland 100M system Lots of information, lots of diagrams, lots of uh, how-to information tells you what uh, particular attributes different sounds have. So again, I think this is a, 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 an excellent resource. So here's the fourth book, Multi-Track Recording for Electronic Music. It's a little bit quaint when it talks about tape recorders. Uh, but the basic principles are the same if you substitute a multi-track door for um, a tape machine. Um, so you might find this more, possibly less useful than the other ones. There's a good old four track recorder. Okay, so that's a, a quick look at these books and I hope you can see and understand why I think these are such a wonderful resource for learning analog synthesis. Now, while we're talking about books and books I use to teach myself analog synthesis, I'm going to mention a couple of other books which I probably read before I got my Roland 100M system. I'm actually quite surprised to find these are still in production. Having said that, we're talking about sound and music and physics and they do not change. That is why these books, the Roland books, which were written over 40 years ago, are still absolutely relevant today. Apart from the tape recorder one, of course. So the first book was this one, Music, Physics and Engineering. Now, this is a textbook. So I found this on Amazon, and if you want to know a bit more about it, it's not very expensive, but what's this, 11 or 12 pound? And you can have a look inside if you want to see what's inside, see what the contents is. It is a little bit uh, more textbook-like, a little bit more technical. To be honest, I think if you start with the Roland books, I don't think you'd go wrong with that. And it was only if you want to take a really, really deep dive into sound, physics and engineering that you might want to take a look at this book.
Um, another book, I'm only going to mention one more. Now, I can't find this on Amazon. I did find it on this website. Um, I'm fairly sure that 99.9% .9 of my viewers will have no interest in reading these books. But I'm going to mention them because I did find them actually useful. So this is A Psychology of Music. And it contains a lot of interesting facts and information about music. And again, this one isn't terribly expensive either. So that's just a couple of other books you might want to look at if you want to really deep dive into this subject. Now, although these books are essentially about analog synthesis, or perhaps more technically correct, subtractive synthesis, this is where we start with a, a, a harmonically rich waveform and then filter it down, we subtract the harmonics from it. There are other forms of synthesis, but the basic principles of taking a sound source, of using filters and envelope generators to shape the overall sound, of using LFOs and other modulation sources to further modulate the sound, they all still apply whatever form of synthesis you use. Well, virtually any sort of synthesis. So if you have a good understanding of subtractive synthesis, you will be able to put this knowledge to use in many other forms of synthesis as well. Now, I don't know when these books ceased publication, but they certainly weren't available in the 90s. And I thought it would be a really good idea to make them available to other people interested in synthesis in PDF format. Now, these were published by Rowling, so I wanted permission to do this. So I was working in the industry at the time, so I had friends at Rowling. I got in touch with them, told them what I wanted to do, and they put me in touch with some people at Rowland HQ in Japan. And there were several emails when backwards and forwards and the bottom line here according to them seemed to be that these books were put together by several different people and they couldn't trace them all to get copyright permission for me to put them into a pdf now i have to say that sounded a bit weird because if you are working for a company anything you produce is normally copyrighted to the company so i was assuming that the copyright would be held by roland in japan now, I've written manuals for Yamaha and for various software companies, and I would in no way expect to hold the copyright over that material. So I just find this really odd and really strange. But the bottom line was they couldn't give me permission to turn them into PDFs. So if I had got permission back then, then the world would have had easier access to these books 20 years earlier than it does. Now, the links to these books, at least the ones for the Foundation and Electronic Music ones, were put up in 2018. Now, I've no idea if permission was given or not, but let's not say anything. I'm sure Roland will be quite happy to know that these books were being used to further people's interest in analog synthesis. So now you can go and download the books, but if you do, please read them or at least have a look through them so you can see what information it contains. And if you're new to analog synthesis, or even if you know a little bit about analog synthesis, there may well be something in these books which you perhaps weren't sure of or which you didn't know. So that's it. I hope you enjoy the books. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have them, please consider hitting the subscribe button, ring the bell. So you get informed of new videos when I release them and click the big thumb. It all helps. And as always, I really do appreciate you taking the time to watch these videos. So thank you very much indeed. I will see you in the next one.